Welcome to the FastGraphs Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool tutorial on utilizing the forecasting tool. We've created a table here to illustrate all the different types of forecasting stocks that you can come up with. We've listed them in order here based on historical EPS growth rate. And you can see we have companies that grew at real low rates like 2.7% all the way out to companies that have grown at over 15%. That's very important in understanding how the tutorial works. So first off, we're going to take a look at the low growth stock Edison International here. And we're going to shorten this time frame to a 15 year time frame just for perspective. And what I want you to notice is that the company only grows at about 3%. And that creates a line you know, using the Graham Dodd formula of 14.71 times earnings. So when we're forecasting a low growth stock, it's important to know what multiple the company is going to be trading at. So first of all, let's go into the forecasting tool. And we're going to look at the various different ways that you can look at forecasts and analyze forecasts. First of all, you have five tabs here. You have the estimates tab, the normal multiple tab, the long-term growth tab, the historical compound annual growth rate tab, and then the custom calculator. Now, what I want you to understand is there's actually three different sets of estimate data here that you're taking advantage of that the subscriber can utilize and take advantage of. The first two graphs, the estimates graph and the normal multiple graph, are utilizing what are considered specific estimates for the next one to three years, depending on the company. And the way this tool works is that we give you the number of analysts listed here at the bottom so there are 17 analysts forecasting for 2022 on Edison International, 17 on 2023, and then it drops down to 15. So notice that that changes. All right, this gives you the exact earnings, consensus earnings number that these analysts collectively have forecast. Below that graph, you get adjusted earnings estimate history. You can see what the analysts were saying about the company six months ago three months ago, the most previous estimate, and then the current estimate. So for example, in 2021, these 16 analysts that were reporting on Edison International went to 455, 453, 447, and then this company came in at 459. Okay, so you can see that the analysts were actually lowering the estimates, but yet the actual number came in higher than the analysts had estimated. That's where you can find that data on the company scorecard, where you can see what the consensus estimate was versus you know what actually the analysts were originally saying and whether or not it worked or not, but more on that here in a moment. The normal multiple is also important because this is based on the formula, we're using the Graham Dodd formula here, the normal multiple is really a market multiple. So if we use the historical graph as the example, the theoretical calculation for the fair value of this stock would be a PE of 14.71, this very low growth stock using the Graham Dodd formula. Oftentimes you'll see this come in at around 15 and this is obviously very close. And the blue line is simply a market average. What's What's been the normal valuation that the market has applied? In this case, that number is a little lower. So when you're using the forecasting calculator, it's based on the future growth rate of 3.93%. That would suggest a 15 multiple would be fair value at those level of earnings. So we've marked this graph with a 15 PE. Everywhere you touch this graph, you'll see that the PE is 15 times earnings. You can see that by the orange ink there in the pop-up. So going all the way out here, there's your 15 PE that the stock is theoretically trading at. And by pointing at any one of these points, you've got quarterly points in each year, you can actually calculate what your rate of return would be. So if you're looking at the next two quarters, you could point to this dot here. And if you invested in this stock, counting dividends, you'd have an opportunity, in theory, if everything went according to plan, to earn about 5.84%. The long-term rate of return would calculate slightly higher at 8.54%. The other thing that you need to know about the calculator before I move on 
is that you've got the increments of P.E. ratios. The 15 P.E. ratio becomes your base. That's why it's the dark orange line here. And then you've got 10% increment multiples, 10% lower and 10% higher consecutively for each thing. The orange lines, of which there are five, four light-colored orange lines, one dark-colored and two more light-colored, those indicate what we often like to think of as the valuation corridor on the theory that the estimate calculator is not likely to be 100% correct. As you can see by the analyst scorecard, it can be close, but not necessarily 100% correct because these are, after all, estimates. But it gives you a range of valuation and it gives you an opportunity to look at different multiples. Now here we've got a PE of 15. The normal multiple, as I indicated earlier, is using the same earnings data from the same number of analysts. However, we're looking at the blue line on the historical graph or the market value line. So this is given what the theoretical market. Now the market, as you remember, used to discount this about 14.7. So this gives us a slightly different number and slightly different calculations for what the rate of return. But the important thing to remember at this point is both of these tabs are using the same estimate data and based on the same number of analysts. So these are the specific estimates. The second set of estimates that you have would be the long-term growth estimate. Now, this is a trend line long-term growth estimate. In our opinion, the only really relevant number here would be the final number because what we're simply doing is we're growing the most recent actual earnings number precisely by the growth rate that's estimated by these analysts. In this case, it's 4%. So you can see we're growing 4.59 by 4%, 4%, 4%, 4%, 4%, 4%. And that gives you an idea what looking out long term might be. I don't think it makes much sense to focus on these numbers because this is simply a straight line extrapolation of what we like to call the trend line of what the earnings growth would be if the company grew at, at that level of earnings, grew the previous earnings, the previous actual by that number. So it's simply another perspective, another way to look at the company. Now, one way to understand this would be to go look at a site like Yahoo Estimates here. You can exercise that by going to the external links on Fast Graphs here, this tab, hit the drop down and go to Yahoo Estimates. And Yahoo Estimates, if you look at the top here, now they've got 17 analysts and 18 analysts giving you information, slightly more analysts, and they give the actual estimate number of 452 versus 485. That would be in contrast to what Fast Graphs is showing at 450 and 480. So a slightly different number. But the point is, these are specific estimates provided by Yahoo, even though they're slightly different. If you scroll down to the very bottom, you will see a similar estimate to what we call the long-term growth. Ours can be three to five years. This one is five years. They're saying 4.7%. And that would correlate with the 4% that we're showing here. So the point is you've got two tabs using the same estimate, specific estimate data. You've got one tab using the long-term estimate data. Then the third set of estimate data that you have is the historic compound annual growth rate. This is analogous to what Ben Graham once said, you know, calculate the five-year historical growth rate and use that as your forecast multiple. So here, we default to the five-year compound annual growth rate, as you can see here at the bottom, and that was 2.94% for Edison. And so we put that number in there, and we simply grow earnings by their historical growth achievement. This is not using analysts of any kind. This is simply using the company's historical results as your estimator. And then the, finally, the last calculator would be the custom calculator. Now, the custom calculator allows you to do a lot of custom work. For example, you can go in and if you, know, if you recall, Yahoo said 4.9% for the growth rate. So you could type in 4.9 down here, hit the draw button, and it will draw it at a 4.9% growth rate. So it changed it. I'll use this example in a bigger one. But you also have the ability to input your own earnings and your own dividends if you disagree with what analysts are saying. So you can input any of this data and essentially come up with your own custom information on the stock. So anyway, this was the example of a very, very low growth stock. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to 
a much faster growing company, if you will. We're going to go into the fastest growth stock in this thing, which is Icon PLC. And we're going to use it and illustrate the difference in how the estimates are drawn. Now, here you can see the company has a historical growth rate of 19%. If I did the last five years, and I need to run about eight years to get close to doing that because I've got forecast data, you can see the growth rate's been 16%. If you just remember those numbers for a while, when you go into the forecasting calculator, what you find here is the estimate now defaults to the formula using P equals growth rate. So the analysts are forecasting a 17.7% growth rate on average over the next three years. And that's comprised of a 21% growth this year, a 16% growth next year, and a 15% growth the following year. So that averages out to 17.7. In this case, we draw the orange line at a multiple of 17 times earnings or a P-E ratio equal to the growth rate. And again, you have the same corridors of value, the same 10% increments that you have. For example, you can see that the stock is currently trading at a 19.7 P-E ratio, and that's, you know, almost looks like it's slightly above this orange line here, where you can see it's trading at 19.7. But that, if it continued to trade at that, you could point to that, and that would give you what your rate of return would be. The normal multiple line is again defaulting to the five-year normal P.E., which in this case is a lot higher. If you look at the stock historically, as I pointed out, you know, you got over a 16%, but there's actually a better way to do that, is you would take and scroll out all of the estimate data here and then hit five years up here. And this would give you a closer number, but you actually got to, you know, because we're in the middle of a quarter here, you get a little bit of a distorted number here. But the point is that you're simply using the normal multiple here that the company achieves. Here you've got the normal P-E ratio that the company has historically traded at. So if you go in here, you can see that the normal P-E has been, you know, a lot higher for this company. Whether it's right or wrong is not the point at this point. It's the piece of information that that's how the market's been rewarding this company. Okay, a theoretical fair value was 16 times earnings, but it's been trading at 24 times earnings. So here you can look at the company. If it hit, continued to hold that multiple, you can see what the P.E. would. Now you can also do more conservative estimates by scrolling through here and looking at what all the normal P.E.s were. And if this number is too high, in this case, the lowest normal P.E. you get is around 22-something so you can, you know, click on it and it applies. You'll notice that the line here is blue. And then once again, if it traded at this normal PE, it would give you the ability to quickly calculate what your rate of returns might be. If you were looking at a fair value PE, it would be lower rates of return, but still double digit and still attractive utilizing this example. Again, you can always check the analyst scorecard. This company has a really good record, only in the COVID area really you know, error caused it to be a, a big miss for them where they missed it by a higher than a 10% on the one year and a higher than a 20% on the two year margin of error. But the analyst scorecard just gives you an idea of how accurate analysts have been. Um, so that will be Icon PLC. When you're looking at companies like, you know, to real quickly go through this, just to kind of recap, you look at a company like UGI, you see its historical growth rate's been 9%. The stock is trading at a blended P.E. of 12.99. You go into the forecast calculator, the company is expected to grow at 5%. That would indicate a 15 P.E. This gives you a margin of safety you'd be able to look at. The normal multiple is a little higher at a 19 P.E., but again, you'd have to determine whether or not that normal multiple for that you know period of time was actually appropriate or not. But I want you to notice that it was comprised of a lot of very high data here at that point. So, you know, sometimes the normal multiple works and sometimes it doesn't. And for example, if you looked at a company like Donaldson Company and looked at them historically, you can see that the market has had an obvious bias here. They've constantly valued this at 22 times earnings. So here you would use the blue line. The only time it actually even touched the orange line or came close to the orange line was during the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009. Otherwise, this is a 22 multiple. So when using the forecasting graph, 
we create a 15 multiple based on the 11%, almost 12% forecast growth rate. But if you were being realistic from what the market was doing, you would go to this normal PE of closer to 25. And again, that would be somewhat sound because the market has normally priced this at a 22 multiple. Now, if that 25 seems a little high, once again, you can go into the normal multiple and scroll down and find a normal multiple that's you know a little lower and more you know closer to the 22 or 23 multiple i don't remember the exact number now that you saw so you have the ability to change some estimate data here as far as the long term growth rate data you know this is using the long term growth rate estimate this is the trend line estimate again the analyst it's a different number than these two previous estimates they think it's going to be 10% and you can simply point to those, you know, 21 or 22 multiples or even a 15 multiple, which is what this theory would be if it only grew at 10%. And then the historical compound annual growth rate gives you a opportunity to input historical growth as your proxy rather than looking at analyst forecasts. You know, in the five year is 8.83%, but you can even use real conservative numbers like 4% and just simply do different what-if scenarios if you want. And then, of course, you've always got the analyst scorecard to see how accurate analysts have been. And then going back to the forecasting calculator, you have the custom calculator, which allows you to input this data. Now, I'm going to go through one more with you real quickly because this was a question that came up. I'm going to use Target Corporation. If you're looking at the fast graph, I want you to notice that Target had a very strong year here. Okay, When you went into forecasting in Target, the analysts were expecting about 7.9 or 8% growth. The normal multiple would be about 15.7 because historically, this stock trades within that narrow range of somewhere between 15 and 17-ish times earnings. But what was interesting about this stock is the long-term growth forecast was 28%. Now, the point being is that this group of analysts that were reporting to FactSet, if you will, really did forecast that at 28%. If you to check that against Yahoo, they also gave it a strong number of 14%, but about half the number that these did. So you could go in to the custom calculator and input the 14% growth rate and draw the stock at that number, and you still have a very attractive number. There's a lot of other customization that can be done in the custom forecast calculator, but today this video was just to give you a quick overview of what the forecasting tools of fast graphs are about. The analysts, how many of them there are, whether or not they're raising or lowering the estimates you know, for each of these times. Um, you get the scorecard, which gives you a record of how accurate they've been to give you a guide as to whether or not the estimates might or might not be reliable. And you get three sets of estimates, specific estimates on the normal and the estimate tab, a long-term trend line growth estimate, which is just simply that. And then you can use historical earnings growth instead of analyst estimates at all. And or you can go in and do your own numbers from, you know, whatever your own ideas or getting data from another source and go into the custom calculator. So anyway, this is the Fast Graph Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, forecasting tool tutorial on how to use it, how to interpret it, and how to think about it. We hope you found it helpful. We want to thank you all for being subscribers.